G'day and welcome back to Rusty Inspirations. Today we are moving on with what could possibly be my favorite part of this whole build, and that is setting up all the drive and clutch mechanism on the supercar. Now, if you've been following along, you'll already be familiar with what I'm about to say, but we'll probably dive into a little bit more detail about what's actually going on with this clutch. So for anyone that's familiar with the Supercut will know that this is the run of the mill drive clutch, how, how it's activated. We're doing away with this system and we're going down a different path with this little modified piece. I'll try and explain it the best I can. So on a Supercut, the clutch is normally engaged and it's held together with spring pressure. From there, you would disengage it with this lever. You can ride it a little bit depending on where you hold it in this position. But for me, I wanted to make it a little bit more like a Scott Bonner Model 45, whereas the clutch will actually be normally disengaged and held apart with springs. And then you would gain drive by pulling the clutch to engage the drive. I hope that makes sense. So my intentions with this clutch modifications was an attempt to make this big old commercial machine a little more nimble in a residential backyard. So as we know, this is an old greens mower, like a commercial use mower. Don't get me wrong, this system obviously served well and done what it needed to do, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I'm trying to use this in a small backyard and I'm just trying to get a little bit more driver and maneuverability out of it. We'll see how we go. We'll find out if it actually works the way I intend it to. All right, so this system has been completely reversed. As you can see, we've got cork clutches on there, like on the Model 45. Um, that was more to, to do away with the asbestos. So yeah, all our bushes are good. Again, we've got all the information on here, all our ordering, shows your gears bushes and then on the back page we've got the clutch pads main shaft uh, the push rod that would disengage it that's no longer needed and these big old heavy springs that used to hold it engaged which are, are no longer required all right now due to the clutch having load on it while it's driving as it'll be pulled in with this big bolt it will now require a thrust bearing, which will be located here. Wasn't necessary before as how it was set up, but um, I think it's definitely gonna be necessary now. So ideally, wanna use these washers on either side of this, this bearing. Um, the surfaces here are relatively flat and smooth. So for the time being, I'm gonna run it without these because there's just not enough room with the length of the bolt and uh, it'll, it'll push this too far out and it won't mesh as well as it should. So that's not gonna be a problem. At a later date, if it's all going smoothly, I might get a mate to uh, mill this down, the thickness of the two washers, and then we can run a washer bearing and washer and uh, have a nice hardened surface for them to run on. But for the time being, uh, it's gonna be just fine, I hope. So previously there was a fibro washer on here and a little bush here, I don't know, brass or copper or I can't even remember what it was now. Now they didn't, the clutch didn't spin on it when there was load on there. Uh, it only spun on there when it was sort of just in idle. So um, now I've run out of room for this fibro washer, as I was saying, when we machine this down and do all that, we'll be able to make room for it. Again, for the trial purpose, I'm not overly concerned. I think it's gonna be just fine. So I don't wanna go machining it all down to find out that it's not gonna work. Doesn't mean I'm not confident. I just, I just wanna be sure. <laughs> Keep the bolt flush with the end. Poke that up in there. And get it to mesh. This is exciting for me. Guess we better put our split pin in here. Yes. 
So this was definitely an oversight, but uh, lucky it didn't bite me in the butt. It uh, only just clears that. We'll take that as a win. Definitely didn't consider the rear roller when I done it, that's for sure. You put the big nut in the back. Now that's another issue, isn't it? How do you get that done up with that on there? Hmm. This has to go on afterwards, which means I have to pull that pin back out and uh, put that in after that's done up. Gee, you think the bloke that designed this would have designed it a little bit better, wouldn't you? Put a nut on the back. Right, suppose I could fight with this one here. Oh, another problem. It's broken. It's just one after another. Oh man, so many oversights. In a perfect world, I would have mocked all this up and built this while it was assembled, but um, yeah, I kind of just wanted to get it all painted. So don't worry, where there's a will, there's a way. All right, not exactly what I had in mind, but uh, it'll probably prove to be better in more ways than one. We'll bring the pin up through the bottom. Not as aesthetically pleasing, but works, and it's gonna be a lot more practical for putting the split pin in through the top. I'm gonna put this little washer on the top just to stop it scratching that up and making it look terrible. I'll put a split pin in here. Right, next we've got our grease nipple. The only two places we'll be injecting grease is on here and in here. Everything else is sealed bearings. This plate we've made up, had to make it as thin as possible just to gain the clearance that I needed on here so it wouldn't hit the chain cover. Yeah, so the original one was a solid flat plate with a little nipple on the end that that push rod would push into. Again, if you're familiar with the super cuts and had these apart, you'll, you'll know exactly what I'm on about. Pretty good. Next, we're gonna be replacing our old push rod with our pull rod. <laughs> Not sure that's the correct terminology, but hey, I made this thing, so I'll call it whatever the hell I want. Again, we've got another thrust bearing, as when it's got load on it, it's going to be turning on this. So, I'll just get a bit of grease on there. I assume these will need tension from time to time. Maybe it gets pulled apart every season and re-greased, I'm not sure. So we put that on there. Washer, bearing, washer. Then we slide that all the way through there and it'll come out in there. So this is gonna be a little bit hard to film because it's in a bit of a fiddly position. So we've got a washer. Hmm, need one of them cameras that goes on my head. I'll put it on and then I'll show you. All right, there you see it. Washer, spring, washer, nylock nut. Now obviously that needs to be tightened up quite a bit. Get that right. So my biggest concern is that I might not have incorporated enough leverage into this system. If anything, that's what's gonna let me down. It's all fixable, obviously, but it's just trial and error. And silly me, he's gone and painted everything, so. Yeah, so the way I could have achieved that was by either A, moving this closer to this point, which would actually increase the leverage quite a bit, or the obvious one is, lengthening this but you sort of need to find happy medium because then you want to make sure you get enough throw 
in your clutch lever as well. So I um, did do some quick sort of drawings to try and work it out, but uh, we'll see how we go. I guess CAD or something like that would have been great for something like this, but um, I'm not that technical. All right, so we got it up on jack stands. Give you a bit of an idea of what we're hoping for. Disengaged. Engaged. This gives you a bit of an idea of the thrust bearing doing its thing. As you can imagine, it's got the same thing going on on the thrust bearing on the back side. As I said, the biggest issue is going to be is if I haven't incorporated enough leverage into here. Let's just wait and see. All right, next thing is to fit these pieces. Now these are what hold our chain cover on. Yeah, this one here doubles as uh, what fastens up the chain tensioner for the reel. I guess I should add that I've um, remade these out of stainless and I've also made them offset. So this one here is completely adjustable depending on which way you face this as to where the chain cover will sit, just uh, allows you to fine tune it. And this one here, I've just welded in a position that uh, suited the chain cover a little bit more nicely than the originals. Bit of molly grease on there. And that'll just be a washer followed by a spring washer and then the nut. So as you can see, got a little bit more adjustment with that than we used to. I guess you could sort of bend them around and get them to sit where you want to, but obviously being stainless would be a little bit harder and but that works quite well. So the washer stays on here. Tensioner. And again, flat washer, we have a lock washer followed by the nut. We will tighten this nut up when we position this in the right spot for our chain. So we'll leave it right back for the time being. And I guess now's as good a time as any to fit our chain. If anyone out there knows where I can get this specific chain, this one's still got a little bit of life left and I'm not overly concerned, but I've got another one that will need replacing at some stage. Let me know. I've I found chains close, but nothing the same. So they're either the right distance between here and the wrong size roller or vice versa. For the amount of work that it's doing, the wrong size roller is probably not gonna be the end of the world, but I guess it is gonna wear out the sprockets prematurely with something as hard to replace as this is sort of not what you really want, is it? You can see this one's got a half link in there. I assume because the reel's getting closer to the end of life and it's pulled it so far away, it needs to be longer. All right, so let's see how we go here. Tell you what, it's warming up in the shed. I think uh, we're expecting temperatures of 44 degrees today. Absolutely beautiful. if that's a wider chain uh, joining link hence why it's got two of these on here all right so this bit's important anyone that's played with push bikes and motorbikes knows all about this so our reel is going to be turning anti-clockwise from this end this direction so we don't want to put our this way technically if something grabbed it it'll flick it off i don't think it's going to happen in here but that's just a rule of thumb so closed end in the direction of travel towards the front and the open end towards the back. So from here we'll get the chain where we want it and we'll tighten up the nut on the back. Alrighty, that's all starting to look a bit like something now. Um, for those of you that don't know, you want to constantly maintain this chain tension. I'd say that's pretty good. It would, would tap on there, but 
I guess it naturally wants to fall that way. But we don't want it becoming loose and rubbing on this inner gear here. As you can see, this one's already had the chain rubbing on it, which is very, very common for these machines if they haven't been maintained and adjusted correctly. All right, so other than adjusting this up in the right place with the cover, we've only got one other thing to do, and that is what is missing in this hole here. Our deflector. Now I suppose we might put it on because then it wraps up everything inside the chain cover. All right, so like everything in Supercut World, there's a few different variations of these. This is the most simplest type. There's another one with a big old ugly apparatus that allows you to adjust the deflector. This is the older style and in my opinion, it kind of looks a little bit cleaner and nicely finished off. It probably doesn't send the, the clippings into the catcher as well, but I don't even have a catcher, so, and I don't really use them. We'll work on getting a catcher at a later date for this machine. Right, now we'll do up the sides. All right, there we have it. That looks not too bad. So as I said, probably not as practical without the adjustment, but it definitely looks clean in my opinion. All right, next we've got our side cover. I've put this rubber around the outside. Um, seems to fit pretty well. Um, the sad thing about it is obviously this sort of follows this line a little bit so it does protrude past the outside of the cover but I guess it beats scratching up your paint and all that sort of stuff and and probably seals a little bit better and maybe even holds it on there a bit tighter you know you've got a, a, a rubber gasket sort of loading it up and holding it on there so I'm gonna run with it so if anyone wants to know come from Bunnings and that is what you are looking at. Cover could do with a fresh polish. It's been a while since we've done that video. If you haven't seen the uh, side cover polishing video, go and check it out. This thing was bloody horrendous uh, when I started. Bloody scratches all over it, and we like said she's dulled off a bit now and it could do with another lick. So now we're going to just get this into a position that suits us the best. It is not too bad. Oh, I don't mind that. It's not too bad. A half inch on the back here and tighten that up where it looks the best. Right. All right, there we have it. Starting to look pretty good. You can see here what I mean, sort of. They never really sat perfect on the covers anyway. Well, this one didn't. Um, I haven't seen one that does, but all in all, I think it looks good. Still better because in my opinion, it doesn't scratch all the paint up. Helps it sort of fasten up a little bit tighter. That's, uh, that's pretty good. So we still need to pump grease into our grease nipples grease up the gears and oil the chain and all that sort of stuff. But I might leave that to last minute, just um, try and keep it as clean as we can while we're working on it. Um, it's not hard to get back in there. Just obviously take your cover off and, and you're back in. And if we do need to make some adjustments or pull something apart for whatever reason, you don't have to worry about playing and all that crap. So I reckon that is gonna do us for today. Um, I'm thinking next video, a uh, real quick one, front roller. Real simple, but uh, it needs to be done. And then that'll leave us with a pretty in-depth video on the handlebars and setting them up. You know, we've got all our levers and all that stuff to put on there. And, um, and then finally, we'll be putting on our power unit, the Kubota. 
all painted up. Don't mind the dust. She's been sitting around for a little while. Check out this little gem. Little, I can't remember. She was, she was, uh, she was packing some ponies. Uh, 6.8 horsepower. G65. It's brand spanking new. New old stock. <laughs> So a mate of mine moved into a, a house and um, this was sitting in the corner in the shed. So in a box and all, I don't know where the box has gone, but um, he asked me if I wanted it. And I was like, oh, nah. In the end, he ended up saying, Dylan, come and take this thing out of my shed. I'm sick of moving the bloody thing around. So what a bloody ripper, eh? Exhaust is still, <laughs> you know, not a speck of rust. No air filter in there, but um, runs and just like a dream as you can imagine for a brand new motor. Does anyone know how to tell what year this thing was made? I wouldn't mind knowing. I'm gonna go with uh, early 80s. Let me know what you think. I reckon it'd make a good motor for a, a scarifier or, or, a, um, or a decent core or something. Plenty of herby jerbies to keep it moving. All right, I'm gonna keep this outro real short and sweet because it is pretty damn hot in this shed. Can't wait to get this shed extension done. Um, hopefully we'll get that happen in the next month or so. Fingers crossed, just a few other things to sort out. So um, yeah, we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers, legends. Are you really gonna sit right there? Are you really gonna sit right there? <laughs>